We titled this one ESPN is tone deaf because as much as the story is going to be about Jameel Hill and her tweets about Donald Trump, it really has to do with the fact that ESPN is a corporation. And one of the things that actually our uh, TY Young Turks main host Cenk Uger talks about all the time and it's important to note is that corporations aren't people and you have to stop looking at ESPN as a person. There is, you have to ask who at ESPN instead of ESPN. We're gonna get into a right. whole bunch of topics. We're probably gonna have to trim out one piece of this clip for Pluto. And if you wanna watch the whole entirety of it, because we know it's gonna run long, uh, go back to the YouTube page and make sure to click here or there or you know something. You can find everything in the description box below. But here's what happened. Uh, long story short, Jamil Hill sent out a series of these five tweets. Donald Trump is a white supremacist who has largely surrounded himself with other white supremacists, continues to say. He is unqualified and unfit to be president. He is not a leader, and if he were not white, he would never have been elected. This all, by the way, on September 11th. Donald Trump is a bigot. Glad you could live with voting for him. I couldn't because I care more than just myself. She was going back and forth with, as you can see, a couple of other people. The height of white privilege is being able to ignore his white supremacy because it's of no threat to you. Well, it is a threat to me. And lastly, she calls out the people asking if they know the difference between Twitter and TV. <laughs> because of uh, what she was saying on Twitter opposed to what she was saying on her show. ESPN then felt the need to send out this statement. <coughs> ESPN statement on Jameel Hill, the comments on Twitter from Jameel Hill regarding the president do not re represent the position of ESPN. We have addressed this with Jameel and she recognizes her actions were inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, before I throw it to you guys really quickly, it's important to note that Clay Travis took this information and literally jerked off to it. Uh, <laughs> Rick, Francis, your thoughts on Jameel Hill very, and very, very, ESPN. Very, very valid point. That's uh, a fair point. So, <laughs> Clay Travis point. is a trash, trash, trash human being. Oh man! Um, <laughs> by the way, quick. quick. <laughs> so you know, so you know my, on the same I, day that no, Ted Cruz was found I, jerking I, off. I get it. I get it. You know my political stance, right? But here's the thing: What's your I, I'm not going to go overtly political on this Ooh. and say one thing and the other. I'm just going to call out that ESPN has no idea <laughs> what they're doing. Like they literally don't. It's almost like they're trying to pretend. Not that they're leaning left, that they just have some sense of morality and are trying to appeal to uh, both demographics. Because we know that they fired a guy in the past who compelled Obama to Hitler, Thank and then we rehired him. Yep. Because they wanted to be like, wait, we gotta, we gotta try and appeal to both sides, you know? So we're like, we'll, we'll hire him back just so that he can come back and we can show that that racist uncle demographic can still have something to tune into. But then when someone comes out with an opinion towards President Trump, it's like, okay, well, we need to discipline her so that they can see that we're, we're not leaning one way or the other. Whereas I've talked about many a times, it's no longer a choice anymore. Like yeah. the, the political climate in this country is either you just, you're gonna choose a side. You're gonna choose and you stick to your guns. Like politics right. and sports are not separate. People that say it are so stupid. Like the point that people should not be bringing politics into American football by taking a stance during the national anthem. Okay, well, if you wanna remove all politics, remove the national anthem, remove the militarization of the NFL, remove the saluting, remove all of that, because that's all politics, by the way, just in case you forgot. Remove everything and have no one say anything about politics. You can't just have one side and not have someone else voice their opinion. Remove it all. And if you wanna do the same with ESPN, ESPN, if you wanna prove that you are so appealing to everyone else, then just remove all sense of politics whatsoever, because you're so contradictory. I, I personally think, and I agree with you, but I personally think that they're at a weird middle ground because we now have this influx of many media members, the three of us as well, that are not sticking to sports. Mm -hmm. So now we're in this era of big corporations, and look, God bless the Young Turks, because we're allowed to say whatever we want, and we're allowed to, and by the way, I don't like the term stick to our guns. And maybe it's a little liberal of me because we need gun control, but we should think of like another. Did I say stick to my guns? Yeah, you did. Like, I, I'm just trying to think of like. I don't know if I you did. You have guns. Did I say that? I usually thing. get like a trigger you warning. Have, I think when there's I say more guns. ammunition than you have, anything. You have a gun. Yeah, I do. Yeah. What's he saying, Anchorman? What's he saying? Because it's got to, you want to get to a scrap, I got, I forget the names of his two friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that was Joe Dirt, I thought. No, and what he gets, when he knocks off the Jack Black off the motorcycle. He knocks yeah. off Jack Black. Well, he, he I'm, I'm just kidding. He okay. the burrito at him. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. James D. Noise water. Right? That's, right, that's right, that's what it is. <laughs> something like <laughs> All right, so like, my point is, they had to say something, okay? As a corporation who mainly focuses on sports, but have allowed their own respected personalities like Sage Steele to be so tone deaf to the march at LAX. <laughs> and then also with Jameel Hill, not that she's tone deaf, I align myself 
mainly with her thoughts on Trump. I think a lot of us do. But they had to say something. So I'm not so much mad at them saying, uh, putting out a statement because the one thing you can't really do in this situation to appease both parties is to be silent. And I know that they've been very, very inconsistent, but you have to remember this is a corporation that has not only hired uh, Jamil Hill, who obviously has uh, her views in order, mm -hmm. which again, I align myself with, but they also hired Rush Limbaugh, who made some really dumb comments Rush about Donovan Lim McNabb way back in the day. So he's they're still trying running from the hurricane <laughs> that he doesn't think exists. <laughs> yes, completely. <laughs> so like they're guys. trying, they're trying to play to both sides, mm -hmm. and I understand that. And if this is what they have to do, fine, who cares? I still think that we should be allowed to have a voice, not just in sports, because this is the political climate that has been run through America, where you sort of need to take a stance in one way or the other. The worst thing that you could do in this day and age is be completely silent and say, no, 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 I'm gonna separate, not church from state, but I's gonna separate my no, sports from my point. politics. Church and, and state's a great example to use because it's what has been used against sports for a long time. For one, uh, and as Ben Mankiewicz has said for years and years and years, politics and sports has been uh, at the intersection of some of the most important uh, civil issues since the 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Jackie Robinson and baseball being the most clear cut yep. black and white, literal black and white example of politics and sports, because if we want to say politics and sports don't belong with each other, well, then there would never have been a, there would still be the Negro Leagues, which is, you look back in that and you go, what? Yeah. That's insane. In the sense of ESPN, this is where, unfortunately, you do have people like Clay Travis who get, I, I'm going to use the same analogy, rock fucking hard off stories like this. But the thing that people have to take note of is that he's the one spinning it. So for one, I'm not insulting Clay Travis's intelligence. Clay Travis is actually a smart dude. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with his political opinions. I don't agree for with his- For flat out the lowest that's yeah, fine. ever heard. That's fine, <laughs> everyone's entitled to their own. My point being is, and as Rick, you mentioned, he has a law degree, I believe, he which does. is a lot more uh, uh, better than my degree. But my point being, hold on, my point being, when it comes to him having the ability to spin this story, because he's the one that broke the Robert Lee story, right? Because it fits, of course, his narrative and his agenda. And he and Clay Travis talks about being in a space that shouldn't have politics. His thing is that politics and sports shouldn't intersect. He doesn't want them to. He wants to talk about sports. Right. But then he takes these stories and runs the fucking Tucker Carlson show. Yes. You are same with Whitlock. Same as Whitlock. You are being a giant hypocrite by saying. No, nobody wants to see politics and sports. We don't want to see politics and sports. But MS, ESPN, and all of these other players that turn into this liberal bias mm -hmm. towards it is what's pinging. Uh, uh, by God, purging ESPN subscribers. No. Wrong. ESPN's base audience is the same as Real Time with Bill Maher, has a clear cut older demographic, and it's purging subscribers because people like us will give you sports commentary for free yes. on a medium that people will go to under the age of 30. So why the fuck would anybody pay $9.33 for the ESPN channel aside from watching live sports? Right. They don't. They shouldn't because it's a scam where you can go online and get your highlights or you can go online and get your commentary. So the mm -hmm. idea that you have some people taking and spinning these stories and you turn on Fox News and you see Tucker Carlson talking to Clay Travis about ESPN being liberal, who at ESPN has a liberal bias? Who from the top has a liberal bias? Is it Skipper? Because it really wouldn't fit his wallet if it made sense that he was voting fucking blue. That's true. Uh, I, I, I do want to backtrack on the Clay Travis thing. A law degree doesn't mean shit when it comes to his political point of view. I mean, Ben Carson's a fucking neuroscientist. Doesn't mean he's intelligent when it comes to his opinions. Like he's made some stupid, stupid no, 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 comments. I think, I think he was no, saying no, like just, in order to curb. I, I know, I, I get it. Favor, like yeah. you can be he's somewhat. Like it's very honorable that you can go ahead and do that. Clay Travis has so many flaws when it comes to his point of view. Uh, like you said, he has said in the past that he doesn't want to cross over politics and sports. But then in his tweet, quite literally earlier on, says I have no problem with politics and sports. That's because that man would not be anywhere near as successful if he didn't politicize sports. Yes, His whole narrative correct. has been throwing Colin Kaepernick under the bus. And that's where he's got a very Ben Shapiro way about him, right? Where he he lies behind truths, right? I made this comment last week on another video. It's like, they'll use a truth, right? So like in Ben Shapiro's instance, it's like, oh, more white people have killed than black people. 
No shit, they make up the large majority right. of the population. It's a disproportionate point that we're talking about. Clay Travis will do a very similar thing and he will lie behind not even truths, he'll just spin something in his own favor with the Michael Bennett incidents. He was quoting the police union as to mean the police. That's why. So he was coming out saying, oh, the Las Vegas Police Department have said it's a lie. No, you imbecile, the Las Vegas Police Department union who protect the police officers were saying that it was a lie. That's like quoting that Donald Trump's a good president because Donald Trump Jr. comes out and says, right. my dad's a great president. Oh shit, you're right, you got it. He's protecting his instance. So Clay Travis is an imbecile on oh, so many levels. And for him to say that he's okay with politicizing sports, but the left are the only ones that get away with it. How are you still on a job then, moron? He's created his own. Yeah, he created well, but, his own. But the he same thing, how has he made, <laughs> how he he made, how he made a career out of it then if he, if he thinks that he's the only one that gets punished because, for it? Because there's people who will give him the platform because they're the other, the opposing viewpoint, which people like to flock to. And the problem is when you're on a medium like a Twitter or social media in general and you have a following, it starts to pile up. Uh, it start, I mean, it starts to build followers, his periscopes get- He's on Fox Sports Radio, how does he not get a job? Is he on Fox Sports Radio? Yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Outkick the coverage was picked up by Fox Sports yes, Radio or it's his own? Yeah, he's right. But he so, was, he used to work for Deadspin at one point. He used to work for used Deadspin. To what I see in college him, football for Fox Sports. What I see in him is what happened with Jake. Where Jake said like- Jank, I think it's okay. <laughs> Jake? Jank. It's like Jake so, Tapper? So like <laughs> Jake in the day, <clears throat> and he said this on the record, like he used to be a Republican. And yeah. then he had mm -hmm. this change of heart seeing how the landscape is changing and he flipped where he was. Nonetheless, I've seen the same with Clay Travis, but just in the opposite. Like he used to work yeah. at uh, Deadspin, he used to work at a few other places. And then it seems like he had this change of heart in the last two years, maybe, maybe a year he and a half. He saw an opportunity. Roughly. Right, correct, he saw the opportunity, he made the switch, and thus this is where we are it's in 2017. Called, it's called punching up. <laughs> sure. You're taking a shots at ESPN, <clears throat> the worldwide leader in sports. Yeah, it's their own fucking slogan, but there's a reason. They're, they're in it to make money. If you wanna read the best actual take on uh, ESPN, and this is not even in regards to Jameel Hill. It's from about six months ago. Will Leach, who was, I think, the founder, Good writer. founder of Deadspin, he, he does was. sports on Earth. He just released, I tweeted out yesterday saying spot on the 10 reasons <coughs> why ESPN is like losing their subscribers, and it has nothing to do with an actual liberal bias, even though those who want to spin it that way will use that to influence those who are watching that specific person, the Whitlocks of the world and the uh, Clay Travis's of the world, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason now, the Tucker Carlson's of the world.